The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 28th, a fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, go ahead and send me an email. Send that out to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A bit of a mixed bag out there. You got the Dow up 119, the S&P up 10, the NASDAQ 100 up 26, Russell's up 11, Semi's up 11, Trandy's up 157, New York Stock Exchange is up 57, Gold's up two bucks, Silver's up a nickel, Light Recruit is up a buck 17. We're having a party. Natural gas is even up four cents. 30th Treasury printed out at 131.20. That's up one point and seven ticks. Leading the charge, dollar-wise, the upside, you've got the top financial group limited up 764%. Must be an IPO. 152 bucks moved to the upside. Zaya, I hope you have a little bit of that. But Zaya, the freight company, up 25 bucks, nearly 10%. Charter Communication, a little over 7% or 25 bucks. Mercado Libre, 22 bucks. That's got to be one of the more volatile stocks out there, Mercado Libre. And, and Chipotle's up 15 bucks, a little less than 1%. Now, to the downside, it's Addis Home Care Corp, of 27%. I hope you don't have any of that. That's down 30 bucks. And First Solar, not far behind, off 29 bucks, but only 15%. So cut in half. And you've got the Aon PLC down 5% uh, or 15 bucks. Cloudflare's off 15 bucks or 26%. There's some guys get taken a big hit today. HubSpot is down 3%. That's only about 12 bucks to the downside. So let's begin like we have recently. Let's try to understand where are we at from a market press standpoint. Let's start with our longer term time frames. We'll take a look at both the S&P and the uh, NDX 100. This is the S&P 500. We're bullish 60, bullish 240. Daily is slightly bearish, meaning there's 120 instruments trading above the daily profile versus 184 below. I'd say that's a little bit more than just slightly bearish. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, the weekly time frame shows 128 above, 132 below. So it's really the daily that the buyers have to really conquer out there. So they've got their work cut out for them. With regard to the daily time frame, we're going to see that price is up at resistance when we take a look at the EES mini. Actually, right now it's trading above resistance, but we'll still take a look at that. The NDX 100 with regard to its market breadth, and here's where it gets dangerous for anybody trying to short the market. Just recognize that what you're up against is a steamroller, baby. You've got the 60, 240 daily and the weekly, all with bullish market breath. Let's just take a look at them in detail. 67 above, 17 below for the one-hour chart. We take a look at the four-hour chart. What you've got is 52 above, 15 below. That's very strong. Let's take a look at the daily time frame. The daily's got 32 above, 29 below. So here we're just kind of teetering, but you still have that bullish crossover. And we're going to get that same type of uh, numbers on the weekly. We've got 25 above and 24 below. But do recognize the NQ, the NASDAQ 100, is bullish for all of its time frames. And it can absolutely lift all boats higher out there. But it's got to deal with resistance as well. We also have the 30-minute time frame. On the 30-minute, we take a look at this is for the S&P 500, 153 above, 129 below. And let's switch that over to the NDX 100. I'm assuming this is also going to be in a bullish mode out there. But uh, it could be wrong. I am wrong. 
22 above and 38 below. So it's a 30 minute chart when we take a look at the NQ that we'll want to pay attention to out there. But let's start by taking a look at, uh, well, let's, let's, let's do this here. Let's come back to this chart while I'm here. So here's the daily time frame. So we can see yesterday the rally stopped really at the top of its uh, weekly profile, 13,348, but also closed just, it closed at what? Uh, the close was 13,20, uh, gee, I don't know what was yesterday's close. Hold on a second. Sorry, just got to hover over the right thing. 13,231, the top of that profile, 13,226. So that's your resistance zone that price is dealing with. Again, 13,226 to 13,348. The ES mini yesterday, that close was right on that oscillator and change line. So it too hit resistance. It's trading just above it right now. A close above, it's going to suggest to move to 41.88 to 41.98. That's both the top of the daily and the weekly profiles, respectively. In the case of the Dow equity future contract, back inside its profile, it wants to target the top, which is at 34.209. Now, the Russell 2000 has formed a new profile. Now, this one's kind of an odd profile. When I say odd, it formed above price. That's a bearish message. However, when I read, look at it, the low is above the prior low and the high is above the prior high. So from a trending standpoint, it's actually kind of bullish. But it can't get bullish until price gets back inside that profile. And more so than that, it must close above 1789.31. That's the center of that bullish structured profile. So you've got the Russell that's at resistance. Um, yesterday, the interesting thing about the Dow Equity Future contract, let me just blow this up here just so we're each looking at the same thing. And actually, let me turn off the trend lines, uh, just make it clear this up just a tad. Give me a moment. And if you'll notice that this is a bullish structured profile. And price closed below it on the trading day of the 25th as well as the 26th out there. Two days below, the bottom of profile says a counter trend move will stop at resistance. That's the center of that profile, 33,975. Now, I have no idea where price is going to close tonight. But a price closed above 33,975, and we haven't hit 34,209. Price is headed to 34,209. Typically, whenever you close above the center of a bullish structured profile, buyers have the strength to get it up to the top of the profile where those sellers are at, and then it's their turn, their turn to try to take a, uh, a, a, a hit at it. If we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, New York Stock Exchange right now, this was in that extreme oversold or overbought reading. That worked its way off and got down to the oversold level yesterday morning. And now price is up, up above uh, the, uh, the, uh, the zero threshold level. Um, so now you need two consecutive close above. But right now it's signaling that buyers are the ones that are trying to take control. That is most certainly what we see when we take a look at the spot volatility index, which is trading below right now. Yesterday's low. That's a bearish message for it. That's a bullish message for the S&P 500. And then finally, we can go take a look at our Apogee, Perigee pivot points. In this case here, it's Apogee came in this morning at about 119, I think was the exact time. And uh, you take that exact time, you note on your charts exactly what that price point is at, and which is very easy to do when you're trading the futures out there. And you can see right now that the ES Mini is trading above Apogee. From a short-term standpoint, folks, that is a bullish signal. I do realize folks went short the ES Mini. You had to or should be aware of that Apogee pivot point. Why? Because the ES Mini got right down to it and held. That is not the bearish signal that you want to take a look at out there. In the case of the NQ, that would be your bastion of hope out there. Price did get above it, right back below it. That key number there for the NQ is 13,234. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Give us a call, folks, 877-927-6648, or you can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 126, S&P 11, NASDAQ 1 are down 25, the Russell's off 15. Let's uh, let's start taking a look at uh, some questions. I'll go a little out of order here, and the reason is because we're just taking a look at the equity future markets out there, and really that's the first question I'm going to go into, which is from G-Man. So G-Man inside the Tiger's Den says, can we take a look at the IWM for a long call entry? Here, your target is 179. So if you're already in the trade, I get that. If you're not in the trade, um, let's let's just review whether you're in the trade or not, what we would take a look at. Now, one one thing I want to point out, uh, G-Man, and, and, and I appreciate the question very much. Uh, we might have a caller in the line. Do we have a caller? You're seeing my home screen. Yeah, I want you to see my home screen. Perfect. So we're all we're all in sync here. So um, the first thing. The first thing that I want to uh, do, G-Man, is, you, you know, in order for me to really answer that question, you already know this, I'm going to go back to the equity future contract. And the reason is because it actually shows much different information than well, if we were to take a look at the IWM. You are in the trade. So first, let me go, and I'm going to go to a short-term time frame out there. And in the short-term time frame, what you'll see, this is a 30-minute chart here for the uh, Russell 2000. So here you'll see the A to B equals CD. You've got a price projection of 179. I'm not sure how you came up with it. It doesn't really matter. Right now, we're taking advantage of the data that we have available to us. And the data that we have available to us shows us that the A point for this A to B equals CD formed down here at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning, and that was yesterday. Makes a nice little rally up into this B point at 1762. That was three o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. We get a retracement into about six this morning. It was actually 430 this morning for the Russell 2000. That set up the C point. That was a 65, so we'll call it a 0 0.618 retracement. Set up that A to B equals CD pattern. Now, what we don't have out here right now in the uh, in the uh, in the Russell for the 30 minute time frame uh, is a bearish reversal candle to confirm this pattern. But we, we got to go take a look at the other charts, though, G-Man, just to see where we're at with regard. As I take a look at this, we could easily have a TD9 count pattern that's out here. So we want to most certainly take a look at that. But first, I want to go with regard to the A to B equals CD. Here it's very clear. So if you're in that trade, I would have a stop, a trailing stop at least at this stage here because we've already achieved the one-to-one -one price target. It was a 0.618. It was a little bit more than that retracement. This could be just a, basically about a one-to-one -one move. Could be. Now when we go over and take a look at the um, – the 30 minute chart, whoops, that wasn't it. It was, I think I put it right here. So I switched this over to take a look at a 30 minute chart here for the IWM. And you can see here, 
the the only A to B equals CD pattern I could really draw, and that, well, that we know that's not that can't be accurate. That's just a twenty three percent retracement. The other one that I could draw in here, which I hate to do, what I mean by that is because I have to use the exact same swing point for the high and the low of the B point, and it would look like this. But either way, and at least there you get a point three eight two retracement. Now that would give you the one to one price projection of one seventy six. So you're in one seventy nine in the IWM. That looks like that's probably the low of the gap. No, it's not even the low of the gap out there was uh, one. 77.21 but so you're in this A to B equals CD pattern out here as well but it's really the A to B equals CD for the Russell 2000 equity future contract versus this one so if you're using the A to B equals CD tools or price projection really pay attention to the equity future contract you're going to trade the Russell 2000 I really do suggest that you get access to the futures contract you don't have to trade it but you want to understand the patterns now speaking of wanting to understand the patterns and I don't know that it's a 30-minute chart that uh, I just chose that time. That was a random time. It's kind of a time that we like to use intraday just to understand what's going on with the markets. Now let's go take a look at the white background charts of the Russell 2000. And here we take a look at that 30-minute chart where we took a look at A to B equals CD. We now see a TD9 count top that's in place here. And this is a real good reason for you to have a uh, trailing stop in place here. Now, what you're looking for is you're looking for price to close above the high of this pattern. Now, the high of this pattern is out at the 1779.40 area. If you get up above that, well, then you might get beyond your 179 even in the IWM. But you would, what this would tell you is that right after forming a TD9 count top, that this just simply negated it. Unlike the TD9 count top, remember we took a look at how price rallied yesterday into 330? That was a TD9 count top on that 30 minute chart, and then we got that back off down. That actually formed an a buy the D point pattern to the to the downside out there. This was more than a one to one A to B equals CD to the downside for sure, but it was that bullish regolf, bull sash candle, I should say, that uh, confirmed that buy the D point, or in this case here, that Gartley buy pattern. So have a stop in place. We don't have any new profiles for a 30 minute time frame. What, what time frame do you man do you use i should really ask that question because what i should do is put up that time frame chart for you so that way you've got those particulars but again i'll just use the 30 right now you know you've got your stop in place so that's great on a trailing um let's just take a look at the other intraday chart see if there's uh, any better signal information for you so what do we have on a 15 minute cheese on a 15 minute we have a td9 count top that td9 count top took price right back to its oscillator and change i'll just expand out the chart let me make sure we're in the right spot. We most certainly are. And so you had a TD9 count top, that, and that oscillator and change line had changed colors. Now, when that oscillator and change line changes colors, good, you're a 15-minute trader. Now we got the 15-minute chart up here. It's perfect. So when it changes colors, especially after a, a topping pattern or bottoming pattern, in this case here it's a topping pattern, it formed, we expect the anticipate price to pull back to that line. That's the whole reason that I developed that line out there. Why? Because I needed to know when a retracement was just a retracement. The same as each of you out there. Right? When is a retracement just a retracement in a market that moves up and down and up and down? Well, this is a perfect example of it because when you get back and you test that and reject it as it's done, that is a very strong bullish move. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't sellers out there. There's not resistance. There most certainly is at 1778 that the more important resistance is the high of the session so far at 1779.40. So I would stay with the trade. This is quite a wide profile. So you really don't want to see the Russell 2000 equity future contract close below that green oscillator and change on at 1767.70. If you did, G-Man, that just tells us that it's lost momentum. And if it loses momentum, odds favor it gets back to where the buyers are located. And that's down at 1752 to 1749. So I like the trade. Stay with the trade. I'm pulling for this thing to take out that TD9 count top, both on the 30 and the 15 minute chart. But if not, you've got your stop in place and you're all set. When we take a look at these charts out here, the Russell 2000, we see A to B equals CD patterns to the upside on a four hour time frame and on a five hour time frame. And this suggests that price might want to make a run for 1796. So here's a larger A to B equals CD pattern. Let's go ahead and draw this in here. I think it's a larger one. It should be a larger one. Let's copy and paste. I could be wrong about that. I am wrong about that. But um, okay, so it's the same A to B equals CD. I guess I should have figured that out. Hello, Steve-O. So where's your next resistance point? The next resistance point, other than the TD9 count tops that we just took a look at for the 30 and the 15, is 1784.40. So that would be where your next uh, battle would be. And so uh, I, I hope that helps you out. G-Man, thanks so much for the question. And thanks for letting me be able to show you and everybody else the difference between and why I spend so much time focused on the futures contracts. Because I'm a pattern recognition 
trader, individual. And that's the only reason that you should be listening to the show is try to understand, hey, Steve, well, what patterns are going on with regard to whatever instrument it is that you trade out there? And so in any event, so that's enough there. Let's uh, move on to our, our next question out here. Next question came in by uh, email. That was from Hector and Patty. That came in early this morning. So let me get to um, – let me get to it. Actually, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do that as soon as we get back from this break. We're going to a break. But I'll leave up on my screen, though, right now for everybody, and then we'll close this out. These are the top 10 instruments for each of for the Dow, the S&P, the NDX, the Russell, and the semiconductors. It shows their current market outlook for their daily, weekly, monthly, as well as their intraday time periods. It shows you whether it's got a Rhodes momentum indicator top or bottom, where we're at in the TD9 counts. What kind of Chapman wave levels that we're at and other support and resistance. I'll leave this on the screen until we get back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're going to take a look at Caterpillar. Uh, this is for Hector and Patty. Uh, they are both subscribers of Mastering Probability. So they get this chart each evening uh, when I do my end-of-day reports out there. And so Caterpillar is one of the instruments that they trade. And, and here it provides them with all the information that they really need. Now, we have a confirmed Rhodes indicator bottom pattern. We took a look at that yesterday. We're going to relook at the charts there. But it's providing with their support or resistance levels as well as well as what the current market outlooks are. So uh, it's really great because, you know, so many of the questions that come in 
are really about these instruments here, many of these instruments that uh, show up. And there's many more that uh, subscribers get. But let's go actually take a look at the uh, Caterpillar charts for Hector and try to understand what the uh, question is. Actually, we're going to do, uh, I'm going to, I am going to pull up the Caterpillar white background chart, but but Hector, I want to do this first. I want to go to the to the black background charts. And the reason is because I've got that nice trend line tool out there. So I do want to show you what, what uh, you're up against in your long trade out there. So if we take a moment here, we'll get over to the uh, three-panel chart. Let's get Caterpillar. And when it populates, you'll see the uh, daily uh, trend line that draws in here. And you can see that right now, it's a nice day that Caterpillar had. Uh, it held that Rosemont indicator bottom pattern. That had uh, confirmed back on April the 10th. And so that level of support, which was really the April 6th low, uh, which was down at the 208.94, that was tested yesterday and that was held. And now you've got a nice bounce. Now this is consolidating with inside its profile. Out here. Now that 211.43 is a strong level of support. Both the center and the bottom exist right there. So you're running into resistance here. Uh, look, it's got a nice buy the D point pattern on the daily time frame that only gets negated with the close below that 208.94 as well out there. It's the monthly that gives me a little bit of pause out here. It's just consolidating with inside its profile. You do have the bottom on the weekly. We do have a bottom on the daily. But if those bottoms get taken out, it could be uh, Caterpillar could be heading south. So I just want to make sure that that we throw that out there. Now let's go take a look at the white background charts out here. So you're really up against resistance. And uh, uh, we'll look at a 30-minute time frame chart just to see if there's any kind of signal there. In fact, let's do that right now. Let's pull over the 30-minute chart and see what we see. And on a 30-minute time frame chart, the actual resistance level is up at about 2 219.76. Now that makes sense because we saw on the uh, daily time frame that trend line was uh, the price hadn't actually hit it. So that I, now we've got two. Two different charts, two different time frames that show a resistance level right at that 219.76 area. Um, price has taken out its TD9 count uh, top on a 30-minute time frame. So that's a strong uh, strong indication of a move, but you do have to get through those sellers at 219.76. If you do, then what you're going to get is you're going to get a next move up to the 223 level. Now, let's take a look at this intraday a to B equals CD pattern out here. So we'll just put in the A to B leg. Then we're just simply going to move that over to the C point out here. And Hector and Patty, that actually gets us back even beyond that 223 and 223, age, 223, 23 and 223, 80 level. But nonetheless, you're still going to have battles there. The question you got, we know we have one at 221, 39, the top of that profile. So uh, prepare for a battle. Absolutely prepare for a battle as we deal with some of these resistance zones out there and keep a stop in place and don't let price close underneath those lows, not from yesterday, that, that which is an important low as well. But really, if it closes below the uh, price point of uh, 208.94, time to jettison any positions inside of a Caterpillar. At least that's the call uh, today. Um, we'd have to take a look at it when it actually gets there. Now, on the other charts out here for Caterpillar, what do we see? Really nothing much else on the daily time frame. The weekly shows you that by the D point pattern out here that's in place. Um, yeah, I don't have much else for Caterpillar. So, Hector and Patty, thanks for those other very kind comments. Much appreciated. And uh, you two have a fantastic uh, weekend. Next request. Also coming in from Hector. How about that? And this one is also coming in from Roger. So we get a twofer out here, and that's to take a look at Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil looks very bullish to me. It's trading above the top of its daily profile. It's trading above its green oscillator and change line. So, Roger, it looks like Exxon Mobil wants to head higher. Head higher to where? Well, it does have a Rosemont indicator top on its weekly time frame. And therefore, a close today above 119.63. You're only at 119.15 right now. Of course, actually, I might have a data delay out here seems to be the soup du jour let me just check on that no we're at 119 20 119 28 yeah there's a little bit of a delay so here's the deal raj the resistance level for exxon mobile even though the daily looks beautiful and it does uh it, you need to see a close above 119.63 to give you that doble gi confirmation now i don't even know what that is but it just kind of slipped out there and on a monthly basis you're above profile as well exxon mobile looks muy bueno Boy, that looks really, really good. The question is, can it take out that weekly resistance level? The pundits say it's headed to, uh, the pundits say ExxonMobil trading like oil at 145. Look, <laughs> we have not seen the highs for oil. Not even close have we seen the highs for oil. They're coming to a screen near us in the, uh, in the not too distant uh, future out there. But with regard to ExxonMobil, um, 
I, I, there's nothing more that I can really share with you. Hey, just out of curiosity, uh, what is it? Oh, you know, I don't have that up. What did I do? I do not have that up. I'm not going to log in right now. I was going to put up the seasonal, but uh, so everything looks good. But you're up against that weekly level out there. And what happens if it doesn't take out that weekly level? Resistance is resistance until it fails out there. Um, and I don't know any other way to really be able to uh, put that. So uh, both Hector and Patty, hope that helps you out with regard to Exxon Mobil. Nancy wanted to take a look at Apple. So let's go ahead and fire up Apple right here. And Nancy's question is, can Apple get to 171.05? I mean, that is really a very specific question. So what we've got to figure out is, can Apple get to 171.05? I would say this at this stage, you're above resistance on the uh, daily time frame. That means above the daily profile on its green oscillator and change line. And so it wants to head higher. Now head higher to where? On a weekly time frame, there's an A to B equals CD that would, the one to one gets us up into the 176 level. On the daily, uh, I'm sorry, the day, on the weekly time frame, the TD nine count breakdown resistance area, and that's the real key area for you to be watching, Nancy, is 171.53. Price got up there once, didn't like it, and just headed south out there. But it looks to me like that's where it's headed. You wanted 171.05. Stevie's going to give you 171.53. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Apple. Dan wanted to take a look at BCLI. So let's see where does Stevie put that. Might be right here. So BCLI uh, printing out right now at about 293. Let me fire this up on my other screens out there. See what it's actually printing at. 301 is what it looks like to Stevie. So that would be a beautiful thing because price is sitting just above, it would appear, just above its green oscillator and change line. So that level is uh, 293. We know we're trading at 301. If it can close above 293, odds favor that price gets back to its recent highs up at about that 337-ish area out here. I don't see anything bearish on the weekly. I don't see anything bearish on the monthly. I see a consolidation on the monthly, and on the daily, I don't see anything bearish here either. So what you'd really love to see with regard to uh, brainstorm cell therapeutics, it's just a daily close above that green oscillator unchanged line. Uh, this has had, uh, looks like this will be day number three of consecutive moves higher out there. We have seen one five, two fives out there, but they typically are two and three bar rallies, uh, but you do have two fives. So this could be setting up a little short term one to two day uh, pullback out there. Uh, or it could go higher for another two days. Geez, Steve-O, thanks for all that really great information. I thought it was pretty good. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We're going to take a look at LRCX for David and CBS for Roger. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Let's go take a look at LAM Research. I believe LRCX is the uh, ticker symbol out here. Uh, let's go see what it is doing. Trading at about the 514 uh, level. The actual last trade fired off at 515.89. And about the best thing that I can see out here, this is for David H. David, I just see a consolidation with inside the weekly profile. So last week, price got up to that 526.48 and failed to clear it. Um, and the bottom of the profile is down at uh, 473. Now, I don't know that we'll get down there. Uh, this week, price pulled back, tested, rejected that green oscillator and change line. So it looks to me like this is getting ready to try to make another run for the uh, high out there or the resistance at that 526.48 level. If it does that, <coughs> excuse me, in order to do that, though, you know, the weekly's got to get the weekly, the monthly's got to get back above its oscillator and change line. And that's really your resistance point. And that's currently printed out at the 525.85 level. So if you get about 525.85, well, shoot, well, it's not that much of a stretch to get to 526. Let's just, you're, you're dealing with 526.48 as resistance. No bottom, no top, just a sideways consolidation uh, for the most part. And that is what we see when we take a look at LAM research. So I hope that helps you out, uh, David. And thanks so much for the request. The next request is from uh, Roger, who wants to take a look at CBS. So as we take a look at uh, CVS, uh, this is trading at about 73.30. Uh, 73.37 was the last trade that fired off. Now, you have a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. We didn't, and you had a um, you had one here that also formed. So that was tested and rejected. So the swing point from March 23rd that had volume of nine million shares was tested and rejected two days ago with come on, Stevie. 8.4. So you had a test and rejection of a swing point with lighter volume. That swing point was also Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So now what we're dealing with here with regard to CBS, this is the old dreaded shoot. I closed below the bottom of a bullish structure daily profile for at least two days consecutively. And that says that a counter trend move, if this is only a counter trend move, and I don't know whether it is or it isn't, Roger, but if this is just a counter trend move inside of CBS, you will see this thing run into resistance at 74.22. That's not to say it can't run into resistance at 73.69. It can. But it won't close above 74.22 if this is just a counter trend move. So if you did get a close above that, well, then you'd be off to 75.29 as the next level out there. But CBS does look like it wants to bounce further. The question is, can it uh, get above that 74.22 level? And the answer is we don't have that type of a signal from the weekly chart. Weekly chart says, you know, hey, you're below my profile, old profile support as well. And this could be week number two. And that's a bullish structured profile. And that just says if we do get a close below 73.96 today, well, then the counter trend level could actually take us up to 75.80. So it's a little bit tricky here. Um, but the weekly is a little bit cautious. The monthly is really cautious out here. The monthly says that uh, CBS has uh, is a A to B equals CD to the downside. It needs a bullish reversal candle. And that bullish reversal, short of that, that price might want to get to 56.19. 
I'd be careful with regard to uh, CBS. I'd love it if CBS gave you a nice bullish reversal candle for the weekly time frame to go along with the daily, but we don't have that. So, Roger, it just suggests to me caution. So I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. The next request coming in from Nancy. Nancy wanted to take a look at Apple, so we got to populate that chart out here. So let's do that. Or do we? No, it wasn't Apple. We already did Apple, right, Nancy? Did we do Apple? Yeah, we did Apple. Yeah, we already did that. So sorry about that. You wanted Microsoft. That's what it was. I knew there was a second request out there. It was Microsoft. So let's take a look at uh, Microsoft. I think it was Microsoft that you had asked for. Yeah. And so with regard to Microsoft, oh, strong like bull. Right, you're a daily basis. You're above profile. You're above yesterday's high. You're above uh, the green oscillator and change line. There's no topping pattern. A bearish reversal candle would confirm a road's momentum indicator. Top Microsoft says, I'm headed north. And a weekly chart says, hey, I'm headed north too. But do be aware that it's got one of Basil Chapman's wave number seven patterns out there. It's got that rogue wave. Now, rogue wave. now in order to get that confirmed, you have to have a lower high. That could not take place until next Friday, perhaps. There's also the potential for an A to B equal CD to the upside out here. But Microsoft looks very strong as it's taken out its breakdown level on its weekly time frame of 293.30. Or it appears that that's what it will do out there. So this is suggesting that it wants to go to higher ground and you gotta love the weekly chart that pulled back tested and rejected that green oscillator and change line almost to the t out there it is bullish and on a monthly basis well price is trading above the top of its monthly bearish structured profile out there nancy this is telling us that microsoft wants to make a run for at least 315.95 and if it does that and it closes above 315.95, then we're off to its all-time highs out there. So Microsoft on a daily basis looks very strong. On a weekly basis looks very strong. We do be aware of a wave number seven top potential. And the monthly chart looks also very strong. So there's your answer with regard to Microsoft. And thanks so much for the second request out there. Um, I think so with the third request. You did ask for BCLI, and we did provide you with that information. Dano wants to take a look at the googly one, G -O -O G. So let's populate our screens with that. Try to get a read on what Google is doing out here. It's trading right now at about 107.17, which is below the top of its daily profile. So you've got resistance. That's at 107.17. That's the first thing is that um, Google has got that resistance level there, Dano. Uh, you've got a Rogemintum indicator top that has been confirmed, and it's really just led to a sideways move. So Google's in a sideways consolidation, right? If we were to draw that consolidation pattern, it would look something like this, right? Uh, we would use at the high about right there. And for the lows, it'd probably be somewhere right in that range. So you're just trading in a consolidation. That's Google on the daily time frame. The weekly time frame has got a new profile. That formed last week. Uh, that from what, last week, Dano. And so your resistance level there is 107.62. Got 107.76 on the daily. So that's the that's the where the battle is taking place. And even if you get a close above that, do recognize you may only make your way up to the top of that consolidation pattern or what I would say is more likely 112.15. And 112.15 happens to be the monthly oscillator and change line. So you've got resistance on the daily, top of the profile. Resistance on the weekly, top of the profile. Resistance on the monthly, it's right now the center of its bearish structured profile with additional resistance being just above at the 112.15 level. So I think we've just got your good old fashioned consolidation going on inside of the googly one. I do hope that helps you out, uh, Dano. You're looking for a short. Well, you're looking for a short. Um, you're up at resistance. Uh, let's take a look at. Let's take a look at this. So on the short, the short for Google was at the TD9 count top. That was at 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. That was really the better signal for you, Dano. I mean, you can see this pattern out here. you got to love the TD9 count uh, tops. You also have to love the uh, Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottoms out here. That's what formed a, on a 30-minute chart for Google. So maybe, and I'm just saying maybe here, I'm just spitballing. There was a nice TD9 count top that formed out here at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Took price right back to profile support. Maybe, I'm just saying maybe. If you like to trade Google, maybe just uh, pay attention to Google on a 30-minute chart and pay attention to those TD9 count patterns, roads to indicator signals, and you'll do just fine. See, price had pulled back to a level of support. Um, I would, well, I can't really call it a level of support, that breakout level. I don't have a bottom necessarily, but it was around the 109 level, not the 106 level. That was the better trade setup. I'd just be patient out here. I'd be patient. And you got to see. 
Can the NQ, can the markets take out resistance? Can those equity future contracts take out resistance today? I don't know the answer. But we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a U.S. bank. This is for Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for taking the time to write in. Uh, Brent went along this. Um, you can see that yesterday this formed a Roge Mentum Indicator bottom pattern. Did that one that created that Three River Morning Star. You now have a new profile that formed yesterday as well, and you are trading above the top of that profile, Brent, at 33.69. Uh, now, there is a descending trend line out here, so that's really your next battle. Um, if I just draw that in, it looks something. Whoops, geez, that was not right, Stevie. It would look, would look something like uh, this. So I, I would just simply draw that trend line in. That becomes your next battleground out here. The weekly chart is confirming a Roge Mentum indicator bottom. Now, I don't know where the candle is going to be at day's end. Right now, it's a hammer candle. Boy, you'd love it to just close right here and give you that signal, too, while the monthly pulled right back to breakout support of 34.17 and, in fact, may hold. So I like what I see when we take a look at USB. So stay with that position, Brent. That looks uh, mighty fine to me. And I'm, I'm praying for that bullish hammer candle on the weekly chart to give you a confirmed Rose Mentum indicator bottom pattern. Uh, next request is to take a look at uh, uh, Pinterest. The question is where to be long. Well, it ain't today, that's for sure. I don't have any kind of a bottom signal or bottom pattern out there. Um, this did form a TD9 count top. Right now you're below breakout level of support. You're taking out a prior swing point. That swing point did volume of 11 million shares. So far in Pinterest, you are down 28 million shares. Maybe come back and take a look at Pinterest right around the 1822 
to 1991 level. But I would stay away from Pinterest. And Roger, he didn't really want to take a look at CVS. He wanted to take a look at Chevron, CVX out there. We take a look at Chevron, does not look anywhere near as good as Exxon Mobil, but it has regained the bottom of its profile. So Roger, you'd like to see it close today above 160.71 if this is an instrument that you are long in. It's got counter trend resistance at 169.43. That's the number that price must close above. Not today, but you need to see it close above. But you don't want to see price get up there and reject that because that would would say well this was just a counter trend move and that price wants to head lower and maybe we have an a to b equal c to the downside or something along those lines I, I don't really know so that's what i see with regard to cbx and last question was from dan who wanted to take like a ticker symbol lw the question was is there a top and the answer to that question is there is and that top would be negated with a close above 111.54 out there folks stay tuned for great programming have a fantastic weekend i'll see you on magnificent monday Thanks for joining us this week.